My name is Leslie Ann Jones, and my day job is director of music recording and scoring at Skywalker Sound. And then occasionally I go in a phone booth and come out, and I'm a recording engineer and a record producer. We're at Skywalker Sound right now, and it's been my home for the last 21 years. And it's been, as you can well imagine, a fantastic experience. I get to uh, work with the most uh, incredible uh, people here at Skywalker. It's a very challenging environment because everyone is so talented and creative that the bar is constantly raised very high, and I think everyone here rises to the occasion. Over the years, uh, Skywalker Sound, the company, has worked on uh, great films, uh, doing audio post, Foley, sound design, uh, mixing, um, all of that. Of course, we did all the Star Wars films, but m more recently we did um, Incredibles 2, we did Jurassic World, uh, Black Panther, uh, along with a lot of small um, indie films uh, as well. I got into show business the old-fashioned way. I was born into it. My father was Spike Jones, the musical satirist, and my mother was Helen Greco, a singer in my father's band. And I think that they were probably my earliest inspiration, even though I didn't know it at the time. My whole career really is about all the people that are connected to each other and have, are connected to my father and connected to me uh, over the years. Spending all that time watching my father's band and watching my mother sing had a, a big effect on my um, career uh, later uh, in life. When I was a teenager, I was given a guitar and an amp and was playing in a band with my cousins. And we did uh, all kinds of recording sessions in those days, you couldn't just do recording on your own. Somebody had to pay for the recording. You had to go into a professional recording studio. And we had a producer who was um, Sonny and Cher's musical director. So he got the musicians they were using for those sessions, mainly people from the uh, Wrecking Crew, a very popular LA studio group of players, to play on our dates. I got to work with all kinds of recording engineers. Nothing, of course, ever came out. You know, it was the sad Hollywood story. Uh, you know, the a and guy that liked us got fired or the label got sold or whatever. But I never thought about uh, being a recording engineer then. I always wanted to be a, a guitar player. So I joined a rock band and we did a lot of touring. I ended up with a uh, sound system from the rock band and uh, started doing sound for friends of mine and just realized I could never be the kind of guitar player that I admired. You know, I could mimic any Stephen Stills solo there was, but when it came to really knowing what, I, what was on the paper and what I was supposed to read and play, I could never be that kind of player. So um, there was something about putting my hands on a console and being able to change the balance of all the singing that was going on that really uh, made me realize that's where I belonged. I never really wanted to be a recording engineer. I thought I would be a producer and a manager, and that way I could make records in the studio with artists and then be able to guide their career to hopefully sell the record that I just made. But I thought I should learn a little about recording engineering, and I was working for ABC Records. They had a recording studio run by Phil Kay, and I walked across the street and asked if I could have a job. He said, okay, well, we'll try you out and we'll see how it goes. He was a little unsure about how the clients would feel about having a woman in the studio with them, since, of course, then there were no women doing recording engineering. Uh, but we decided to try it out. So I started at ABC Studios in 1973, got to work on a lot of fantastic uh, R&B sessions, uh, and that's where I met my first mentor, uh, Roy Halley probably best known for all the work he did with Simon and Garfunkel. Roy was a fantastic engineer, and I got to assist on a lot of his, his dates. And then um, from there, I moved on to the Automat Recording Studios here in San Francisco, uh, worked with David Rubinson and Fred Cotero. David and Fred were both major mentors of mine. That's when I started doing a lot of jazz. Uh, I did my first soundtrack uh, recording. My first score was uh, Apocalypse Now. And uh, I was doing, again, a lot of R&B stuff. Almost everything I did was live music, except for Apocalypse Now, which was all synthesized. 
In those days, the synthesizers had different knobs and patches, and you had to create all the sounds from scratch. It wasn't just pushing a button that said brass, and you'd get a brass sound. Um, unfortunately, the automat closed in 1983, so I worked independently for a couple of years. And then uh, three clients of mine that I had done a total of five records with all decided independently to take a year off. So needless to say, that was a huge chunk of my salary. And, you know, the record industry was changing. Uh, even then, larger studios were, were closing, smaller studios were being built, uh, people were more budget conscious. Uh, the digital revolution hadn't hit that hard yet, but people were st still trying to save money. There were a lot of independent artists, and so I had to take a good hard look at what I was doing and whether I could continue being a recording engineer. And that's when I, uh, I was recommended for a job at Capitol. Fortunately for me, Capitol hired me, so I moved back to Los Angeles. It was really at Capitol that I started doing a lot of uh, orchestra dates uh, because they had just remodeled their biggest room, uh, the room that was the room that Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin had all done their records in, among many others, of course into a, a real modern room, and it started getting used for a lot of television dates. And that's when I started working with uh, Rosemary Clooney and Michael Feinstein and a lot of great uh, arrangers, and it just went on from there. I worked at Capitol for nine years and had just an incredible experience. Worked with a, a, a great staff there. Uh, it's wonderful to be a part of a team. In fact, that's why I really enjoy being on staff someplace because you really feel like uh, you can work with a group of people day in and day out that you enjoy working with and admire. But it was getting to the point where I really felt like I needed to figure out some other way to do things other than doing three sessions a day and seven days a week. And you know, I had done my fair share of that and started looking around for you know, what else I could do. And I read a uh, story in Mix Magazine, uh, Gloria Borders was running Skywalker Sound at the time, and she said that she was uh, looking f for a way to let the scoring stage uh, live up to its uh, potential and was looking for someone to run the scoring stage. So I had a couple of friends that worked here, and I called them to see if she was serious, and they said yes, so I called. I figured, you know, I'd never run a studio before, but I certainly had worked for enough studio managers to know what was a good way to run a studio and what was not a good way to run a studio. Gloria, I don't think, was interviewing me to be a mixer at all. It was really about my film contacts and my TV contacts. It was probably a year before I actually ever stepped in the control room and started uh, uh, working. Then it's been kind of nonstop ever since. <laughs> 